recording. So welcome everybody, welcome to Energy Play Shop number 18. Today is September the 8th, 2022. So um, we are continuing to talking about the Kundalini and, and actually before I started the recording, we were talking about how actually how important um, the, the two major energy pathways that we started talking about last week. The, the Kundalini is one of them. The other one is the central meridian. So the central meridian is really the um, universal energy coming in. And the Kundalini is really how our body and how our consciousness respond to the the universal energy coming in. And right now, as it is, the Kundalini and the um, central meridian energies are pretty far apart. And that's because we are so far away from um, the universal truth. So the idea is that we are um, on, on the journey of coming back to more to the, the universal truth. So that is part of what um, we're going to talk about, ways that we can do energetically to facilitate that, that process. And that is really the, the main um, topic for this energy play shop. So I just want to, before I begin, um, so I kind of um, mentioned that uh, the, the agenda for this evening is really, well, do we need a welcome? Um, any questions before we move on? Um, questions from last week? Or anything that you didn't quite understand uh, about Central Meridian and the, the Kundalini? Not really? Okay. Then um, in, in a very short period of time, we're going to do the presence meditation just to get everybody to be present because um, being present is really important. And, and then we'll talk about how to realign our Kundalini, which consists of all the, the, the seven chakras. Yes, we do have a question. Go ahead. So, so to make sure, so Kundalini, it's our chakras, so it's on a spine. It's right now. It's close to the spine. Yes, close to the spine, and yeah. in the center, it's universal, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank so, you. Okay. Thank you for the question. So, um, uh, and um, so, at, actually, at some point. Um, at one point in the past, the, those two um, energy pathways were much closer together. However, right now, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the society that we live in right now, we are pretty far away from the universal truth. So we are going back to it. That is really the, the, the intention of the human collective. And, and there are ways, some ways that we can, um, the things that we can do in order to facilitate that, that for ourselves, if you so wish. So we'll be talking about how to do that, how to realign the, our Kundalini so that it, it becomes closer to the central meridian. And then we also talk about something called the infinity loop process. This is a process. Um, that is, well, I'll talk more about it, but it's really um, a, another um, technology to increase our own energy. When we bring in more energy, then we actually, um, we can heal ourselves easier and better, and we can actually realign ourselves. So those, those would be the, the, the topic that we'll touch on today. So before we go any further though, let's get to the presence meditation. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you are comfortable and just take a deep breath in. And 
and let it all go. Let your breath go, let your thoughts go, let your tension go. And then breathe in again, deeply and slowly. And then let your breath go. And as you breathe out, also let go of any tension that you may be holding in your body. You may want to move your shoulders around, move your neck around, all the, the places that you usually like to store tension to just make sure that you are able to let them go, let the tension go. And then just breathe in one more time, deeply and slowly. And as you breathe in, also set the intention that you want to bring back all of your own attention and energy. And as you let go of your breath, let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And then continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as possible. And each time you breathe in, just set the intention that you want to bring back all of your own attention within yourself. During the day, we set our attention outside of ourselves. We pay attention to what's going on in the rest of the world or even to people around us our family members, our co-workers, people that we interact with. We place our attention outside. In this moment though, it's very selfish and gather back, bring back all of your attention, all of your focus into yourself. And also, as much as you can, drop down into your heart. Don't focus on your mind. Don't focus on any thoughts, thinking at all. As much as possible, allow yourself to just be in your heart. And just feel lost for yourself. It does not matter who you are, what you have done, or what you have not done. Simply choose in this moment to love yourself. And you are love. You are the personification of universal love. And when you choose love, you choose yourself as well. So be in this moment with yourself, in love with yourself. No need to think, simply feel love.
and allow this love that you have for yourself to connect you with the highest vibration version of you that you have access to in this moment. And when you feel that connection, and take a deep breath in, and come all the way back into the room, and open your eyes if you not already done so. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. So I just actually just want to take a very short period of time to quickly review. Um, quickly do a review of what Kundalini is. So Kundalini is really energy from the body. Also energy that is from the universe as well but is being processed through the body so it has energy from the universe from earth that is being processed through the body and it is almost inside the spine now due to the tilt of the earth and also also due to how our um body is responding our consciousness is responding as well and that kundalini has a spin because energy does not just go from a to b in a straight line it, there is a flow there is a spin when energy comes in so that spin of the kundalini is clockwise and it really reflects how we experience life on earth. And what is the central meridian? So quick recap is the central meridian is really energy from source, from the creator source, especially from the Milky Way and also from earth itself as well, because earth is an entity, is a... Um, it's a playground that's being that's been created by the creator source as well so everything that is from the universe from the creator source source that's the energy of that is going through the central meridian and the spin and the central meridian energy also has a spin and that spin is anti-clockwise. And it really is the controller of our consciousness because we, we are the, the, the child of the universe. So as the central meridian energy coming in through the central meridian that brings in energy from source, from the Milky Way, from Earth as well. When it goes through our body, it actually activates us. And we, and it actually um, activates our consciousness as well. And it has a direct impact on how our consciousness expand or not. So actually, I just want to show a, um, I think it's this one here. Oh, actually, no, <laughs> not this one. Sorry, let me get to this, um, not this, but this one. Yes, so I just actually want to show a on a a diagram 
So the one in the middle is the central meridian. So being marked by the red dots. So we we went through the, um, the different energy centers. So the first energy center is four inches below the, the, the our actual chakra, which is which is the perineum. So the first one is here, second one is here, and then three, four, five, six. The seventh one is four inches um, beyond uh, the top of our head. So that is the, the energy centers that brings in the central meridian energy from the universe. And the chakra system is these, it's the white dots. So the chakra one, and then second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Sixth one is kind of just, um, just, under, just underneath our skull between our eyebrows. That's, that's the sixth chakra. And then the seventh chakra is kind of, um, it's, slightly to the back, which is called the, um, where all the bones of our, our, our skull come together. That's the seventh chakra. So right now, the Kundalini is kind of close to where our spine is. So that's, that is just a visual um, recap of where the central meridian and where is the chakra system. And the chakra system, which is the Kundalini, is clockwise. So meaning from left to right. And then the central meridian is anti-clockwise. So from, it is from right to left. So that is a visual representation of the two major meridians that is in our body. So now let's go to talk about how to realign the Kundalini. So these two major um, energy pathways within our body, they work together. I already mentioned that the central meridian really brings in universal energy from the universe and also from earth as well. So that is the, and then because those two major energy pathways work together, so they, they're not, um, so they actually influence one another. And when the Kundalini is slow, it also slow down the way, the, 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 the rate that the universal energy can come in because of a, they are spin, there's a spin. So when you have the clockwise spin of the, the central meridian, and then the anti-clockwise spin of the, no, um, the clockwise spin of the Kundalini and the anti-clockwise spin of the central meridian. Because they, ideally, they should be like two um, clockwork that spin together, um, maybe not exactly exactly together however there there is a i forgot what is the the um the ratio of it now um right now the the ratio escapes me however the way that those two um come together has to be a certain ratio that actually de defines how uh, which 
I would say, which density we are in. When it is too low, when the Kundalini becomes too low relative to the central meridian, it actually drops us down to um, like lower than 3D. So at three, in, at the third dimension, in 34, something, 34, 41, I forgot what, what the, the, the ratio is supposed to be. Um, I'll, I'll look it up and let you guys know next time. But they're, they're, they have to be, the spin has to be a certain um, ratio. And if the, so if the Kundalini is too slow, um, it actually push our consciousness down as well, because when the, the, the central meridian has to be slowed down. So when the central meridian is slowed down, it drops our consciousness. So when the, the chakra is small because of lack of energy, it actually pulls the, the energy centers, which is the, 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 the chakra from the, the central meridian, it pulls it out of the central meridian. When it's out of place, that means the energy coming in cannot come in in um, like one straight line. That also skews us so that we we don't have access to um, be able to talk to our higher self or the the, the soul and that is beyond our, ourselves, beyond our physical body as well. So that's why it's very important to make sure that the Kundalini is running properly and that it is um, a certain, it, it is a certain size. So how do we make sure of that? And the one, one way of being able to make sure of that is that we can actually remember last week um, what I've done is to walk you all through each of the meridians with each of the chakra and also as you go through each of the chakra is to imagine it to be vibrant and become bigger so when we consciously work with our kundalini and um, going through each of the chakra making sure that they are running properly and that they are strong and also um, and also thick, then it actually we make sure we work with those the kundalini and be able to make sure that our kundalini is strong so that it won't impair the, the central meridian. And also when we go through the central meridian as well. We also did the same thing as each of the, the energy centers in the central meridian. We also make sure that they are running strong, spinning in the right direction. And also um, when we intentionally grow them, make them bigger and just breathe and use our breath and intention to make them bigger. We are also strengthening the central meridian as well. So now we talk about how to realign the Kundalini because right now the Kundalini is pretty far away uh, or uh, well, as far away as our body still allows it to be. So what we can do is actually to merge those two because energy um, goes where our attention or what we, what our intention makes it to do. So when we set the intention that we want those two meridians, those two major pathways to merge together and to become coherent with one another, then we can actually, um, and when, when we do that consistently, then we actually can realign our Kundalini so that it becomes stronger and also becomes closer to the uh, central meridian. So that's what we're gonna 
practice and do this evening. However, before we do that, I just want to actually go, go through what happens when we do that. So what happens when we actually merge these two? So when we actually merge these two, um, I actually just want to... Uh, actually go back to this diagram now. So, okay, so instead of this, let's just go to the next diagram. It's the next one. So, when these two merge, so we can intentionally get these two to merge. When these two merge though, um, so which energy center or which chakra would be above, and which one would be below? So this is kind of the, the diagram to, to do that. So we'll, we'll actually go from the, the first chakra to, we will go from the bottom up. So <clears throat> the first chakra is, is here, right here, this white dot here. And that is the, the perineum. So however, these, for the central meridian, the so EC1 is here, it's four inches below. So even though there is no, um, no entry here, but it's actually understood that the, the chakra would be actually be above. So CK1 would be above the um, energy center one. However, when we go to the second chakra, though, we will find that actually the, the, um, the second chakra would be below EC2. So, this is where, so then this, this is where EC2 is. So, and this is where EC, this is where chakra two is. So chakra two is actually uh, from EC2, which is from the central meridian is actually going to be on top of, and when we go up to the third one, Actually, the, the chakra CK3 will be above EC3. And then CK4 would be above EC4. However, when we go up to CK5, it will be below EC5. And CK6 would be above. EC6. So what does that all mean? What, what does all these mean? So what it actually means is that, for example, um, CK4 is above EC4. So CK4 is chakra, which is Kundalini, and EC4 is from the central meridian. What it actually um, translates to is that when we make decision from our heart. Our heart has a lot of emotions in it. So when the, the, the CK4 is above EC4, it, it actually means that we, when we make decisions, we actually make decisions from our emotion. So, so that's why there actually is a, um, tradition that there we actually have two hearts we have the upper heart and we have the lower heart and the upper heart we know that the upper heart is emotional whereas the lower heart is more um calm peace and calm it's more spiritual so if we so the idea is that when we start to strengthen the central meridian, we can actually start to increase 
the influence of the EC4 so that it can become more dominant than the CK4. However, in this moment, the CK4, the emotional heart is still about the universal um, energy of the EC4. So therefore, when we actually use our intuition, it is still, we're still pulling in information more from our emotional side than from our um, universal side until and unless we start to strengthen our central meridian. When we do that, when we start to strengthen our central meridian, then the energy that is coming in from EC6 would be able to start to um, moderate the energy that we let in through our sixth chakra. So that's what this all means. However, because we are still living the, the human journey at this moment, so this is okay. However, as we go on, as we move on in the uh, in our evolution, this texture will start to change or start to shift. And at some point, I don't know if you have ever heard the idea that we actually will not have any um, chakras anymore. That's because the central meridian will be actually the the one that is going to take over. And the Kundalini will no longer be, going to be necessary. When we get to the point where these two, actually the Kundalini and the central meridian actually comes together as a whole. And then actually all the energy center can actually become um, so working well with each other that they become one. So that's, however, that's, that will be a while um, into the future. But for now, what we can do to facilitate this process, should we want to, is to actually start to do the process of strengthening our Kundalini and also strengthening the central meridian and then merging the two into one as well. So let's, um, let's do that, shall we? Let's just do this, this, this man. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. When, when the two merge, so if the, that's only the meridian, central meridian, will that be spinning clockwise or still anti-clockwise? Um, I think that I cannot answer that question right now. I don't know. Right, okay. I would imagine that it would be anti-clockwise. I don't know. The, 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 the answer is I don't know, but my guess would be anti-clockwise. Yeah, I think we didn't make that clear in the classroom. Yeah, well, Super James did not mention. No, oh, yeah. what, what do you mean? What do you mean by? Yeah, he didn't say the. I think when he said that when they merge, uh, they will both go clockwise. At one point, I think he said that. I'm not sure. But we can, I, we I can believe that they will still go clockwise. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your, your question. Yes, they will go clockwise. They will still go clockwise because we're still in the body. The body has to take precedent. Yeah. It will go, it will still go clockwise unless we switch it. And we can switch it. The way to switch it is we have to actually go um, beyond the, which is, uh, which we'll talk about next week, hopefully. Thank you. We can actually switch that. 
So before we can switch that, we have to go beyond the speed of light, which is where the infinity loop is going to um, help assist us in making sure that our energy is really high so that we can make that switch. Because the when we get to um, above, actually above, um, six, 16 inches above, then um, we are beyond our physical body. So when we get beyond our physical body, then um, we actually uh, are beyond the speed of light. Because as long as we are in the body, our consciousness is in the body, the energy will spin clockwise. But when we um, raise our energy um, high enough so that it is, so that we, uh, our consciousness is beyond the body and we get into 16 inches and then 32 inches and above, then we can switch, we can switch the direction of the meridians. So the, um, that's, just, that's what I know. That is next week. <clears throat> and um, any other questions? So far, so good. Okay, great. So let's let's just. Um, so I actually just want to do the meditation to um, strengthen the Kundalini, strengthen the central meridian, and then merge the two together. So that is the. You're going to teach us how to connect them? We are going to do that. So um, let's see. The It's actually, uh, I, so hang on. It's actually very, very simple how to merge the two together. It's actually very simple. Um, it's just the central meridian and Kundalini coherence activate and then central meridian and kundalini merge, activate. So that's it, it's very simple. However, um, the first thing is to actually make sure that those two are the, the central meridian and the kundalini, both of them are actually um, really robust and running well. So that's part of the process as well. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, so then just take a deep breath in. Oh, actually, I would like to start the... Uh... 